today I'm going to talk to you about the, the prophetic ministry. Okay. There is a lot that is involved in that ministry given the nature of it and the sensitivity of that ability of hearing, seeing, and being able to interpret the events to come so that I bring on board a certain group of people who have no interest in the prophetic and have interest probably in other ministrations like maybe the minister of teaching, maybe you are an evangelist and you don't see a need in you flowing in the prophetic because if you have no interest in the prophetic definitely there is a reason why you have no interest it doesn't mean that you are not a prophet it might just mean that you probably have not had a person who can explain to you that you you have a desire you have a desire that you're failing to read you might be needing the prophetic you might be so desperately um, desiring to flow in the prophetic but still not be aware that you have such a desire so you might not you might think that you, are, you have no interest and yet you have interest that you're failing to read prophetically until somebody comes and he tells you in as much as you'd want to focus much on just teaching God's people I'm one person who believes that unless and until your teaching ministry is flavored prophetically it will be in most times out of context the information that you give to people will be found to be irrelevant. There must be a bit of the prophetic in whatever it is that you do. If you say, I'm not, I'm just not going to focus on prophecy, I'm just going to focus on healing the sick, you will find yourself wanting to know exactly what the person is going through apart from what the person is telling you. So the prophetic is going to be needed. So you will need the prophetic. In as much as not all of us are going to be prophets, but you will have to be prophetic. You will have to be prophetic. Not all of us will eventually become prophets. But you still have to be prophetic. Your teaching will have to be prophetic. Your music will have to be prophetic. Your acts of generosity will have to be prophetic. So that you give money to the right person who is prophetically confirmed that he is indeed in need of money lest you give money where money is not needed. So everyone here, you have to be prophetic. Even if you are not going to be prophesying, just attending a prophetic session, you will have also to be prophetic in the way that you attend. You will have to synchronize yourself and know exactly what to put on because the prophet would have already seen you coming, putting on... Uh, So it's not you coming to prophesy, but in as much as you are coming to be prophesied to, you will have to be prophetic. Because a day before, a prophet would have seen you wearing what? So you make it easier for the prophet by confirming what he would have actually seen, by putting on what he would have seen you put on. So you must be prophetic in almost everything. 
that you do, apart from you just prophesying. Every action will have to be prophetic. So I'm saying this to add to the number of people who have interest in the prophetic. Some of you without interest, for the last few minutes you're realizing that I think, I think I am, I think I'm, I'm interested, I'm, I want to be a part of this. There is a lot that we can talk about when it comes to the ministry of the prophets. I said, you might not be a prophet, but you will have to, once in a while, demonstrate the prophetic grace. Once in a while. Once in a while. Is it possible that you can be a prophet and not know that you are one? Yes, it is. So how would I know that probably I am a prophet, but I'm just not aware that I'm a prophet? Well, your level of uh, not, not desire, because if you have a desire to prophesy, you might think then maybe I'm a prophet because I have a desire that is measurable. But let's say you don't have a desire, but what you have is a pain. If something in your life is to happen, probably to somebody close to you that you love and you are not aware and you are not warned. Receiving a text message and you are told that your, your child is just drowned. Maybe the maid left, there was water in the tub and then she just fell in and then she's dead. And then you're receiving a message, not from God. It is coming from home, naturally, through natural means. And it's your phone now telling you, not necessarily God. And you try to go through history and you can't find that in any of your dreams. You would never picked that up. Those are moments sometimes when you can realize that the thing in you that feels bad about that kind of, it's not just because you have lost a child. But the pain becomes more because you feel that there is a loss of an ability to have had it before it happened. So you can understand that probably you have it in you. The ministry is dormant. The ministry is present within you, but not yet active. Because the frustration is not a personal frustration. It is the frustration of that particular gift that you have. It is that ministry inside of you that you don't even know that you have that gets frustrated. When something that you know should have been told me happened and I wasn't told. And you know there are scriptures that God cannot do anything unless he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. Not just because you're saying I'm a prophet, but you're saying I'm a child of God and God knows that this is my child. If you've ever had that feeling, feeling bad, feeling the pain of having an incident and you don't enjoy hearing about it at the same time everyone else is hearing about it. It could be an indication that something inside of you is trying to communicate with you that I'm here, consider me cultivate me. You can never feel that bad unless within you lies an ability to pick information concerning events before they happen. You can never feel bad. Everyone else feels it's okay, it's an incident, it's an accident, it has happened. So let's just... but. You are left wondering 
What else is God hiding from me? And in as much as you are going to be in the prophetic office, please understand, you will still have things happening around you that you will not be able to pick. Though you belong not just to the prophetic ministry or to the prophetic gift, but to the prophetic office. Whilst you are operating from the prophetic office, you will still have information that will pass you by. And you will receive announcements through other means. And you will get to know certain things not prophetically, though you are in the prophetic office. You are never going to prophesy in full. You always prophesy in part because you see in part. We yet to meet a prophet who sees everything. They could be there, not sure. But with the little understanding that I have concerning this ministry, there are things that you are not going to be able to see. Because there is the prophetic editing that happens way before prophecy gets even into the hands of your, your media team. When you mention the term edit or editing prophecy, to somebody out there, he thinks maybe you are doctoring prophecy. You are playing around with prophecy. Maybe to make it big in most cases. But you, there are things about prophecy that you need to understand. That when you receive prophecy as a prophet from God. At the time prophecy is coming from God to you. It was not prophecy. Because God is not a prophet. So when he's talking to you as a prophet, you as a prophet, he doesn't talk as a prophet to a prophet. So it is the prophet who converts it into prophecy, not God who spoke to him. So I'm, I'm saying that in case you go to God for prophecy, what you will get from God is never prophecy. Because he is not prophetic. He is not a prophet. So he has nothing to do with prophecies. It becomes prophecy from the prophet to the people. It becomes prophecy from the prophet to the people. From God to the prophet. It's a mere dialogue. It's a relationship. It's a discussion between the two. So what makes it prophecy? It is how the prophet will be able to convert that conversation that he has had with God into prophecy. I have to highlight that point lest you waste your time Moments that you're supposed to be fellowshipping with God. And then you walk out of that presence of God without being told of an event. And then you blame God. How could I have spent day, the whole day I was with you and you didn't tell me that. Yet God was not supposed to have given it to you as a prophecy. Because he's not a prophet like you. You were supposed to be able to convert mere discussions that you were having with the Lord into prophecy. So your ability to convert, your ability to convert 
you will pick prophecies from a relationship. It's a relationship. You should be able to hear what God is saying while he's steward general interactions. It would be so disappointing realizing that God would have already told you things that you are blaming him for not telling you. But it was because of your inability to interpret from God, it's not prophecy, from the prophet to the people, it is prophecy. So I might sound to be wrong if I say you don't get prophecies from God. God has got a number of uh, attributes. God has different natures. He is a custodian of multiple natures. When we talk of his caring, it's a nature. When we talk of his love, it's a different nature. Are you following? Now, your ability to read into those different natures of God, your ability, depending on which nature in particular is having a dialogue with you, You can interact with a certain nature of God that will not find it fit to give you certain information. I must be able to know when I'm with God and we are having a topic because God deals with topics. I must be able to understand as a prophet why God chose that particular topic and he assigned that particular nature of his to be com to communicate with me on that particular day and dismiss the rest of his natures that are not present i can see that he is so excited he's happy today he doesn't want I, I don't see signs of anger on him not because he's not a god who doesn't who doesn't get angry but why is he excluded that part of himself from this conversation So let me put it this way. When you are functioning from the office of a prophet, you have more power than a prophet who is prophesying by reason of a gift. If it's a gift that you use to help God's people, bringing them to a place of knowledge and helping them understand mysteries in their lives. If it is a gift that you have and you prophesy by the gift, You are different from a man who is prophesying or a woman that is prophesying from the office of a prophet. A man who is operating from the office, apart from the gift, he has got the infrastructure. It's an office that supports 
his utterances, his declarations. And most of these guys, they'll tell you every time they call you, I'm calling you from the office of the president. Because they feel that one is much bigger than their name or even their say name. There's an infrastructure behind that, that conversation. You know that if a man is speaking from the office, that's why God spoke to Elijah. He said, you then have to anoint Elijah in your stead and in your house, mm. in your office. Mm. In your office, there's a mention of a house. There's a mention of your stead. There's a mention of the office. Jehu, the son of Nimshi, for anoint to be king of And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of el Bemehola, shalt thou anoint to be prophet. Where? There's a room. In thy room. Hmm. It means that Elijah was in possession of a property somewhere that most people were not even aware of. So there is, a, there is a real estate involved in this ministry. You can't be a prophet prophesying from an office and not have a room. It's a territory given to you. And over that, you govern. And if somebody is to be anointed in your stead, he has to be brought into that office into that room and you have to be taken around so that you understand even the arrangement of the furniture that you're going to find there and have an understanding of, of, of how each unit each piece of furniture represents in the prophetic just like when you're taken into the temple the tabernacle of god Every piece that you will find there was prophetic. Every piece, I don't want to get it. You know that as ministers. Every piece of furniture in that house of God had something that it represented. So, you will find items in that room capable of hearing on your behalf lest you miss out there comes a day when you are not sensitive enough to hear what God is saying and yet what God is saying can be transmitted to one of those furnitures and everything from that room should be able to communicate with you you will not always get information from God every time some of the information you will get it from the furniture the room should not just accommodate the prophet the room is also there to accommodate communications from god you get to places and you begin to hear as if god is talking to you and yet god would have spoken to the room whilst you were away that's why there's there's need for people you know I don't know. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> the God's voice, in most cases, you will find it trapped and captured in certain places. You arrive there as a Jacob who is not known for having dreams. And you pick a stone. And then you are connected to a realm of dreams that are not even consistent with your spiritual life. Why? Because that's a room. He calls it Bethel. It's a house. Though he could not see the four walls, but that was an establishment. It's a place that is accommodating communications. Somebody had passed 
through that place before his forefather Abraham. You know the story. And he had erected an altar using what? Stones. And there was a communication between Abraham and God whilst Jacob was yet to be born. And those communications, there is always the residue. Those interactions, whilst Abraham is talking to God, something else around him is hearing what Abraham is being told. The rocks, the trees, if they are, if they are water ponds in that area, because God's voice is too powerful to be heard only by one individual. It's too strong. God cannot speak and only be heard by one thing. Everything around the prophet should be able to hear what the prophet is hearing. So you end up having information about the future stored not just in Abraham, but within the rocks that were present when Abraham was hearing God. Oh, be seated. So this technology that you now have, guys, of having cameras running, so that what I'm saying today would be heard by my grandsons, God had it a long time ago. So you come traveling as a clueless son and you pass through a place that you have never been to before. And then it will happen in a way that you pick a stone which was a part of that conversation that your forefather had with God. And putting it close to your head, it's a connection. Your ear is right next to the rock that had recorded and kept information for generations to come. So you will hear as if God is saying to you today and yet he said, he said, he said, if I say to you today, and I say today, and they are recording me saying today, right? My son's son is going to play this step and he's going to hear me saying today. As if I'm saying today, today. It was because I said today, today, while it's an object with the, a capacity to record me was present. You will hear God. You will hear God. To, there, there are people that have gone into ministry too late. You ask him, why would you want to have a ministry now? How about 15 years ago, he tells you, I had God yesterday. And God told me yesterday. As if God told him yesterday. Yet he developed enough sensitivity to hear yesterday. Yet God had called him 15 years ago. That's why the Bible says, For God had said to Abraham, Leave your house. And the time that Abraham left his house was not the same time that God told him. The Bible says, For God had told him now the lord had head unto abraham get now the lord out. had mm. the lord had, uh, now the lord had said he had abraham. said so abraham a man that you admire so much and you think he's so obedient you think he's a guy that he hears god and immediately now he had god had spoken several times And he did not obey. 
So you can have a person doing the right thing, obeying God's voice today as if he had it today. But what he would have done probably, some of these people, they would have really, really fine-tuned themselves today. And what they begin to hear is information that God would have spoken even to their father. Do you know that if you fine-tune yourself and you put yourself in the right position, you should be able to access every dream about you that your father had. Because you were present when he had that dream in his loins. You remember our scriptures? Even Levi paid tithe to Melchizedek. Yet when Abraham paid tithe to Melchizedek, Levi was yet to be born. But he was somewhere present, participating in that contribution into the kingdom of God, right up to a point where it is recorded that he also participated, he also paid tithe. While he's to where? In Abraham's what? Loins. That's not the only example. When Adam sinned, all of us, we feel the effects, not just of the sin that he committed, but the sin that we all committed. We were present together as he took that tree and he disobeyed. He did not just disobey, we all disobeyed. It was a conference. All of us were present and we all agreed. So there is no Adam to blame. We were all there. And we all ate. And we all tested. And we all sh fall short of the glory of God. Because not of what Adam did, but because of what we all did. So I've given you two examples. Where things would have happened while you think you were not present. And you think you have a right to not know. You think you have a right to not know. If God gave a revelation to your father about your ministry and you were not yet born, yet you were present, don't try and get God to repeat what he said already. You make him talkative. Let me remind you what I said yesterday. He said to me, you can raise better prophets. I've given you the ability to raise people bigger, better, greater than you. Something bigger than even the prophecies that you give. There's something stronger than even prophecies that I give. That something stronger than prophecies is an ability to raise a better prophet. To raise. I didn't want to hear that the first time. Until I realized that that's, that's really a better ministry. I, I started liking it. <laughs> My God. Oh. Oh. When you start having multiple sources of information and there are communications and there are different types of signals that are coming to you, you become much more established as a prophet when it is no longer only God that you hear. As a prophet, you must improve your ability until it is not just God that you hear. Because God himself doesn't only hear himself. God himself also hears even the devil.
That's why the devil came to Jesus. And he said to Jesus, if you are, and Jesus heard the voice of the devil, Jesus, who is God, heard the voice of the devil. It sounds weird even trying to teach prophets of God on how to hear even the voice of the devil. It's weird. But your office must be able to cover that. Because every office, when you are, when you are doing your, 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 your correspondences, you are likely going to have letters that are going to, to miss their destinations. You will have wrong letters coming into your office. Even in every post office, letters are getting lost every day. Your understanding, not just of the voice of God, your understanding of the voice of the devil. He, God himself, Jesus is saying, my sheep hear my voice. And the voice of a stranger, they will not what? Follow. So when a voice is coming to you, it's coming to you so that you follow it. Voices are yearning for your followership. Every voice that speaks to you wants to be followed by you. But how would you know that the voice of a stranger, this is the voice of a stranger, and you avoid following it unless you have an understanding of how the stranger speaks. How am I going to know that this is a stranger that has spoken? I will know because his voice will be strange. <laughs> A guy is asking for fresh breed of men of God to be sent because he's suffering in hell. And he's saying, I've got brothers and sisters down there, so please, can you, can you please send a fiery man of God who can really spit fire and talk to my people. He knew that his generation was very stubborn. So he needed somebody, not among us, the available men of God on earth. That's why all men of God are being criticized today. Everyone who comes out attacking men of God is never going to announce officially one day to say, okay, this is the real men of God. Why they've been assigned to attack everything that, rep that seemed to represent God. And there's a belief that, like I, t I was telling you today, there's a belief that you'll have to be sure that your man of God is perfect before you follow him. And yet such a thing is never going to happen. Whether it's an educational facility that you construct, all of your professors there are going to have shortcomings. But they just have to be good at their subjects. And students will have to be enrolled. Not because of the weaknesses of a professor. So men of God, they are going to have their weaknesses because they are not just God. They are men of God. The main part will always catch up on them. Oh, all right. So, when God speaks, he is aware that probably there is a generation today capable of hearing his voice and God is aware that there is another generation that is coming without an ability to hear my voice and God knows that I'm going to be probably on, on, on holiday let me just put it that way and I won't be interested in talking 
and I want to be resting like the Bible says and God rested the seventh day and you know that the day that God was resting he was doing something because there's no time when God is doing nothing One thing that I need to remind you that he did on the day that he was resting was to bless the day. He, 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 he. Uh, oh. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. You see? Because that in it, in it he, had what? he had rested from all his work. When did he sanctify the day? during the day and he blessed it for in it he had rested ah okay so you must have an understanding if you are going to be as a prophet you should be able to interpret God's rest so that you don't think that he wasn't doing so I'm, I'm giving you an example in case again you hear that God is silent if he was resting and still doing something and I'm able to pick what he was doing while he was resting I should also be able to hear what he's saying while he is quiet so even during the time when God's voice is rare it's recorded in the Bible somebody should be able to still pick what that silence is all about. Because he is still saying something while he's saying nothing. He's working while he's resting. So God knows that he's speaking today to somebody who, is an ability, who has an ability because that ability to hear him stimulates him to speak. God is in motivated, he's encouraged to speak when he sees ears around him. So sometimes he speaks knowing that there is an Abraham present with me here and then he's encouraged to speak. But because he knows that there is another generation coming that is never going to inherit the ear of the father. So he allows certain systems around Abraham to capture information. So that when it is now time for him God, even him God, to rest. And he's no longer interested in speaking. The generation that will come will be able to rewind. To tap into an established frequency. That God has put in place which contains information and that generation will come and hear God as if God is speaking now while it's during their time God is resting God is not speaking a generation that is able to be up to date knowing exactly what God wants them to do while it's God is not communicating with them but it's a communication that has been put in a room. So when Elisha is brought into the room of Elijah, Elisha should be able to hear what he never heard from God. If you follow, uh, oh my God, if, hey, 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 wait, hey. That's the reason why God had told Elijah to anoint Jehu to be king. Given at least three people he was supposed to anoint. And it's amazing that another guy who is there who is supposed to be anointed is not even going to be king over Israel. It's a foreigner. Yet an anointing was supposed to be exported. 
And you will have a king outside of your nation running his nation according to the grace of another nation. I don't want to talk about that now. But hear this. Hear this. Hear this. Hear this. Still, he left out Jehu. God had told Elijah to anoint Jehu. And he went on to only anoint Elisha. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, uh -huh. who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. Now, him. he left out a certain gentleman and he never anointed Jehu. Yet God had told Elijah to anoint Jehu. If you investigate, you find out it was Elisha who anointed Jehu. Mm -hmm. so the message from God was to Elijah to anoint Jehu and Elijah went and he anointed Elisha and Elisha was brought into the room of Elijah and he came across a file because oh, uh, it's an office there is so much paperwork. Oh my God. Oh, be seated, please. Two Kings nine, verse two. And when thou comest thither, look out there Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, and go in and make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him to an inner chamber. Then take the box of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then open the door and flee and tarry not. We had sent him. It's important, people of God, to understand what is happening here. Because there are always prophetic people around the prophets who will always be sent by the prophet. And it is that same prophet who is doing the anointing. It's important for you to take note of that. There was never a time when Elijah told Elisha to anoint Jehu. There was no need for Elijah to verbally communicate God's agenda. Because we have a, a, a system that we have of communication as prophets. And that system should not be ignored. And we have to be using phones every time. Telephones are very good. Let's use them. But overusing them will destroy another infrastructure that God has put in place. What I've been telling my wife, she can confirm this, that when your phone, when a message gets into your phone, while it is upside down like that, you should be able, before you pick your phone, to at least sense, is there a message or there's no message? Number one. How many? Number two. And before you open, what is it likely going to come? What is it about? So you are already prophesying. You don't, you don't need to have a church. You don't need to have members every time to practice your spirit. There is an exercise that you need to conduct every time without people around. Because no one is ever going to say no to you. No one is going to attack you. But before you even get to an audience, you would have derived enough confidence that I see and I feel, and I hear, and I know. Why? Because by the time you pick up a person, 
and you're about to prophesy, that's not, that should not be your first time to prophesy. Yes. You don't start with people. They will mess you up. Yes. Be seated, please. So you keep improving, you keep because every every furniture in that room has to be anointed. Why is it that every furniture in the tabernacle had to be anointed? There was an anointing that Moses was taught by God to fabricate. Is there? He was given a list of trees, leaves, flowers to mix together and come up with an anointing. So already you can see there, is a, there was an anointing that never came from God. The ingredients of that particular anointing was given to a prophet to come up with an anointing that was never in existence. It was founded by Moses. And it was patented because then God said, let no any other man make another oil just like this one. So you will never come across Moses' anointing until you are dealing with him exclusively. That's why there can never be any competitor who comes to threaten you in your own territory. I know I have an anointing that God has, he has given me the secret cords. I know how this region, how this territory, how this nation is governed spiritually. So I have no threat whatsoever. I have no threat. If people are going to come up and they want to compete with me, I will relax and I will let them run. And I will be watching their backs. By the time they arrive, they will find me there. Why? Because that's the nature of God. God is where he is going. Be seated, please. Anyone who looks at me and you think that I'm threatened by, you don't know me. You don't. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Rooms are allocated, given to prophets. So the question was how did he know? That Jehu needs to be anointed and the instruction was given to my father. Let's establish this first in case I missed out something. Is it Elisha? We need, to be, we need to be right on this one. Yes, Father, it's Elisha. Is it Elisha? Yes. And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophet yes. and said unto him, yes. Gird up thy loins uh -huh. and take this box of oil in thine hand mm -hmm. and go to Ramoth Gilead. Mm -hmm. And when thou comest thither, mm. look out there, Jehu, the son of Josh. The box of oil, you know, again, like I told you yesterday, the box of oil is about to be set free by the prophet. Be seated, please. It is the same box of oil. Remember when the woman came and he broke the alabaster box? Yes, or whether it was, a, it was a bottle. When the bottle was broken, the aroma, the Bible says, it filled the entire house. Mm -hmm. No longer just the bottle. Mm -hmm. So it was the liberation of the oil. 
when oil is opened up it becomes the freedom of the oil that's why i said you don't just need the oil the oil needs you it was once confined the entire pleasant smell was confined locked in a bottle and then when it was opened up the entire room was filled so that's the spreading of an anointing so we are here to set free the anointing let it work it means in the presence of Jesus the anointing becomes free Jesus liberated the oil. Some people who were cooking in the kitchen realized that mm, there is a sweet smell that is coming. While the bottle was present in the house, no one knew that the anointing was present until it got liberated because of the presence of Jesus. That's what we do. My coming here is so that I set free a bottle. Amen. A bottle. You are the box that has been containing this grace for years. So what we're doing right now is you're listening. That's why sometimes what I say, it puts pressure on you. That's the only way we can break the bottle. I'm tempering right now with your structure. I know it. I know what I'm doing. I, I know what I'm doing. It's a matter of time. Your scent. Your aroma. Your presence. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Thank you so much. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. What is so key here is the how information is then transmitted. I've said something very, very profound. I know you're not going to, you know, you've already forgotten that you need to raise your hand and ask questions. <laughs> I know what is happening to you. And I apologize for that. But hear this. The instruction was never given to Elisha. Even when God spoke to Elijah, Elisha had not been anointed as yet he wasn't followed lest you think maybe when god spoke to elijah elijah had he wasn't there so for that communication to be handed over to the next generation you must investigate how god spoke to elijah and how elijah had god it was whilst god was giving elijah instructions elijah took off his jacket and he covered himself because he had already said to God, I'm tired of this. Am I better than my forefathers? He was ready to die. He resigned. So covering himself with a jacket was so that he doesn't get to hear. He didn't want to take the next instructions. But the jacket had. The jacket what? And it was so when elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle in his what in his mantle the mantle that is going to fall on who elijah, elijah. and elisha while he is putting on that jacket he must be able to hear communications the jacket must tell him information about a king to be anointed and if you ask Elisha, did you hear this from God? He would tell you that my jacket told me. I heard it from a mantle. I'm giving you a dimension of God that when God is speaking, there are several other things that are hearing God. Lest God chooses to not speak, Still, you should be able to hear what he's saying that day. 
And when the mantle fell, and he took it, and he put it on, he began to feel. The message is not coming to him as if God is saying, go and anoint jail. No. It was like a feeling. Like there is a king that I need to anoint. So what Elijah had left for Elijah was a recorder. The office will give you information. The furniture in the office will have to communicate with you. You must know who to anoint. If I hit you with a jacket, information has to be downloaded. He did not approach Elisha and say, I would want to work with you. No. He only hit him with a jacket which was so heavy with information. Boom. First Kings 19 verse 19. Uh -huh. And so he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, yes. who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. Yes. And he with the 12th and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. Okay, be seated, please. Be seated. Twelve, which is representative of the twelve tribes of Israel. So the, 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 the occupation that Elisha had was indicative of uh, another agenda. That's what Elijah was able to interpret even the actions of the lesser prophet or the prophet to be. He has an ability to plow through 12 nations of Israel. He has an ability to plant God ideas. Israel needs a spiritually agrarian guy to establish God's systems. And he found him doing what was a clue, a symbol. Most of the people that you will prophesy to you will find them doing something similar to what exactly they are supposed to be doing. And at that time, God might not speak to you. At that time, God might not speak to you. It will have to be the number of the oxen. Many people that you are going to counsel in life, they are trying to run away from the exact assignment. Mm. So they replace it with something similar, closer. Mm. Mm. And they will tell you, no, I just, I just enjoy helping people. So I'm thinking of building orphanages. Yes, sir. <laughs> 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 Running away from ministry. There must be something, a replacement that can force them. <laughs> oh. What I wanted you to understand is the ability that you have given to you by God to hear what is being said by God 
not now but yesterday and the ability given to items around you to hear God and to keep and to store information and knowledge waiting for the next generation to come to an extent where this water that you have here has traveled this water has been around for years from creation same water it's most likely that the water that you have in this bottle once quenched another man's thirst <laughs> and you are drinking it probably for the third time because after drinking it you sweat as you sweat sweat evaporates it goes back into the system gets purified it comes back again if by any chance this water has ever been in Elijah, if by any chance this water has ever been in Moses, if by any chance... Now, I want people to understand this. I want people to understand this. Because there's nothing that gets into me and it comes out of me without a part of me. That is why with your sweat, they can identify your DNA. With your saliva, they can tell your DNA. They allow you to go, they stay behind with saliva, not all of you. What came from you is you. There is a you in what came out of you. Everything that I'm teaching you now is being heard by everything that is here. Explain to me how you can have a handkerchief from the body. It's from the body. Not on the body. It was from. Is there in the Bible recorded in the book of Acts? It was from. It means the man is no longer present. He's away from the fabric and you get the material to a person who is sick and you touch the person and the disease in the person goes away now apart from what you're seeing happening you must try and understand what else is being said by the apron that you cannot hear that the disease can hear I'm not trying to be superstitious here. No. I'm a supernatural guy. But you'll be shocked that there is information that you might miss and you carry this bottle home and somebody picks this bottle and he drinks and he begins to know things that, that, that you might have missed. These are people that will end up moving around telling people that I know things that I've never been taught. Yet they, yet they, they interacted with a certain... Because, you see... You see, people don't want to... <laughs> how, how can I explain this? How can I explain this? How can I explain this? You see, that's, that's the reason why... That's the reason I know you want me to touch yours. That's the reason why... <laughs> that's the reason why, you see... When you are in the prophetic office, what I'm... Are we going to finish this? There are things, you know, the Bible declares that even in the midnight time, even my reigns instructs me. Even my reigns. Even my reigns. They instruct me. My kidneys. They instruct me. Psalm 16 verse 7. I will bless the Lord. Yes. Who hath given me counsel. I, I'm going to bless him. Why? Because the counsel has been given to me. He has. I'm blessing him. 
not because what I've gotten from him is a bigger car. I'm at a level where I bless God at the level of counsel. When it is counsel, just an idea, information from God. I bless him. When I come, when I stumble upon a thought, I begin to bless the Lord. That's how you, you stimulate yourself into that office. Thanking God every time when an idea comes across and you say to him, you make a loud announcement. Oh Lord, thank you, I've seen it. It has arrived. And you begin to bless him. When the Holy Ghost sees that excitement, when you're excited over counsel, you're beginning to take the fa your first steps into that room. Make a lot of noise about very simple things. Very little, simpler dreams. You talk about it. And people are wondering, why is he so much excited about such a... You are blessing the Lord for giving you what? Cancer. And when the Holy Ghost sees that you delight in those communications. My God. You have started a game that you cannot finish. When he sees that you are excited yeah. about hearing from him, he will keep talking to you. Now, so I bless the Lord. Who hath given me counsel? Yes. My reigns also. My reigns also. 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 So they are a part of. God's information storage system. Also, I have to add to the list my reins of things capable of talking to me. So that I will not just be hearing God through my ears. When God spoke, and my ear was not attentive enough. There is a likelihood that there was another organ of me that heard him speak. So while I'm saying, how come God did not tell me? Maybe it was your ear that he did not tell. Yet your reign was told. Put it there. Put it there. Put it there. Put it there. Read it for it. all of us. Be seated, please. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. It's a prophetic run. Don't worry. Let's let's read it. I will what? I will bless the Lord. Who hath given me counsel? Yes. My reins also instruct me nah. in the night season. So he's sort of like separating himself from his own reins. What are the reins there? These are internal organs. Kidneys. 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 Some people, I don't, know, I don't know who gave them this revelation. Some people said a gut feeling. Have you ever heard of that? What's a gut? They could not really figure out. But what they call something, they just say, you know what, something just told me. Something, they call it something. It's, as for us, we know what to call it. It is the prophetic at work. I'm already, I'm, I'm already teaching you how to hear. In case you are still waiting. He is saying, I have a kidney. Capable of instructing me. As if my kidney is not me. Who is the me there? The conscious mind. So it means that it means that you have things that you know that you don't know. 
Because the things that you know that you don't know are known by parts that are not supposed to be knowing. That's why you say, how come God did not tell me? Why? Because that information was not brought to your brains. It's not your head that knows. So you think everything that is not in your head is everything that you don't know. You see, you see, you see, you see there, is, there is a lot that you know that you don't know. There's a lot that you know that you don't know. Because there is certain information that you have that is not in your head as yet. Until it is transferred from your reins. And your reins instructs you. And information is given to the conscious mind. And then you say, oh, now I know. Mm -hmm. Yet you were knowing all along. But what was knowing all along was your reign, your kidneys. But you cannot write that in an exam. You can only bring out what you know through your mind. But I'm, I'm here to tell you that even your purposes are put in certain parts of your body. That when you go to bed, you must have a dream that must be given, the dream has to be given to the conscious mind by a part of you that carries your purpose. You need you to tell you what you are supposed to know. There are things that God has told you that your conscious mind is not aware of. But your reins. If you think this is fictitious, you remember God said to his prophet uh, Ezekiel, before even the bones were raised, he said, prophesy to them. And it, it came to pass as I prophesied, he was prophesying, and he said, tell these bones what I'm going to do. And he gave a list of things that God was getting ready to do to the bones there was nothing present there like a physical ear because that's flesh so no ear was present just the bones and yet god said don't don't go by ears every part of a human body if people come even to church and they sleep while it's a powerful man of god is ministering <laughs> just put them there even children that cannot understand what we teach let them be present while this information is being disseminated there is a part of them not the conscious mind as long as bones are present they can hear the voice of God these children 20 years from now they will stumble on revelations and have you realized that some of you ministers, have you realized that you can come across a, v, a revelation and then you say, I want to teach about this, but let me verify it with my maybe overseer or maybe my senior pastor so that I don't make a mistake. And then what you are sending him is something that he would have already dealt with. You will be shocked after you preached it, after you preach it, and then one day you come across a very old message. And you say, ah, but I was there. I never... It comes to you at a time when you, you think you are, you are originating it. <laughs> it's because when your conscious mind missed it, your bones were present. Your, your reins were present. So it takes time sometimes for that information to be transferred to your conscious mind. And then suddenly you are aware of what you know. And yet you knew about it. A part of you was keeping that information away from your conscious mind. So he says, when I go to bed now, he knows when this happens. So to him going to bed is not just a good night because he's going to sleep. He's attending a lecture. There is a conversation between his reins and his mind. 
I go to bed and I wake up knowing what I didn't know yesterday. And I'm not coming from school, I'm coming from a night. So as a prophet, when you begin to understand your nights that way, you know that I'm going for a lecture, going to bed. You enjoy going to bed because you know you are attending a seminar. So I, 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 that's, that's me. That's, you see, it's a very simple scripture there. But for me, because I'm a prophet, I'm going to bed knowing that I have things that I don't know. But tomorrow, I'm going to wake up knowing. But there's nobody that I'm going to meet during the night. No. It's time for information to be transferred from my reins. So I'm never going to blame God for not giving me information. No. I have it. I just don't know where it is. I must know what to do with my nights and allow certain parts of my body to communicate with certain parts of my body. Are you following this? You might, wa you might not want to believe this because you think we're just being too spiritual. Then ask any physician. He's going to tell you before we conduct any, whether it's a surgery or what, we have to get your blood. Give us your blood. What you would have said is just a summary. You would have said, Doctor, I'm in trouble. I'm not feeling well. I don't know what is wrong with me. And you are done. S most of you, you don't even know what is happening to you. And you get to a person who is in the room, in the office of understanding. And he says, we know that there is things about you that you don't know, that your blood knows. So let's have your blood. And your blood communicates better than you. The blood that speaks better things than that of Abel. Because blood speaks. Blood cries. But if we put a drop of blood here and we ask you people, can you hear the sound, the voice? You can't. But God could hear the voice of Abel crying. There is a sound that comes out of blood. There is a sound that comes out of water. A prophet can tell you, I can hear the sound of the abundance of rain. But there is no sound that, you, that water produces until it hits the ground. Yet it had not yet rained. And yet somebody hears the sound of the abundance of rain. The sound of water. Can you, can you interpret the language of water as a prophet? So they ask for blood. Let's have your blood. We'll do some tests. And then after one week, we'll send them to the lab and then we'll invite you back. And then when you come back, they give you a list of things that your blood would have communicated. And you are hearing that for the first time. So your blood has gone on to tell another man about you. Yet, if you were attentive enough, your blood would have told you during the night seasons. Instructions. There is enough counsel in your reins. Your children's career is located somewhere in their body. God's counsel is present with you. Your bones knows something that you don't know. Afternoon, my father. Allow us to interject. We do have questions, my father. Okay. Thank you, Papa, for the opportunity. Um, I'm thankful because I've attended many of these sessions when you've been teaching us about the prophetic. And uh, I guess I have a bit of a question and an answer when you were talking earlier and you said some people seem disinterested in the prophetic, but sometimes maybe it's not so much that we're disinterested, but it, it, it seems so complex, at least to me. It is, it's, not just to you, it is. <laughs> 
yes one of the most complicated ministries that you can ever come across is the prophetic it is but what i'm going to do sorry what i'm going to do is to simplify it so that you understand it and it has to be simplified to a point where it loses its complexity but this is the temptation. I don't want you then to think that it is simple because it has been simplified. I have to, I will simplify. Very soon, you will see where we are going. I will begin to simplify it so that you can... Go ahead. Uh, thank you once again. Um, my question is, um, when it comes to seeing and hearing, uh, by your grace, um, I've been able to, to see and he hear certain things. My issue, when I look at you, I see you prophesy, but it seems like it's uh, accompanied with the wisdom to know what to do with, with the, what would you, the word you would have heard from God or what you would have seen. For me, when I see things, I can see things maybe three four times let me say dreams let me not say see things like visions but when i have dreams or i hear things or i can perceive things uh let me give an example to make it maybe easier for me to be helped um I, my brother passed away uh last year and before he passed away i had a dream and i woke up once and i knew this is not a good dream and i called my sister and i said let's just pray about it and then second time, third time, I think about four times until maybe a few months later, he finally passed away. And um, he was healthy, he was walking, everything was fine. So when he passed away, I was wondering, why was God telling me this? What was I supposed to do? Was I supposed to tell him, like, maybe you be careful? I, I just don't know. That's where I'm stuck. I, as far as the seeing, uh, not that I see a lot, but I'm just saying I'm thankful for the experience, but what to do with what I would have seen. Okay, this is, this is what happens. When you, when you, you know what, what would have happened had you told him? Had you told him that I've seen you dying? The next thing that you people were supposed to do is to find a solution so that the death is postponed. So it means that your brother was never going to what? To die. And it also means that you were never going to know that you are now able to see what comes to pass. So yeah, you were, you, were, you, were, you were going to still lose one of those two things. Either your brother or the realization that you are now able to see. So this is what happens. When you are, when you are, when you are getting, when it's your early stages of getting into visions and spiritual experiences there is a there is a with even with any business that you want to start i don't know what they call capex huh? Capital okay now please just explain that to me i just want to understand it a little bit so that i don't make i'm, I'm, I'm just there are things that my reins are yet to instruct me CAPEX is capital expenditure, which means your initial investment. Initial. In, initial investment in buying the equipment and the, the tools that you want to at, at, that, at that point, are you already making profits? No. no. It's a no, right? No. It's a big no. It's a big no. You will incur costs at first for the establishment of the room. You must be ready to see certain people dying a death that you cannot stop. Because if God gives you grace to stop every prophecy that you give, you are never going to know that you are a prophet. And people around you are never going to take you seriously that you see. Unless what you say comes to pass. So there's a huge cost get established before you are known as a prophet by the people around you or and even by yourself. You must be ready to lose certain things 
you must be able to see a robbery that comes to pass. And what you have lost is money, but what you have gained is awareness of the gift. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so whilst you are crying and you are mourning for the loss of your brother the prophetic inside of you do not allow it to attend that funeral don't allow the prophetess in you to mourn So during the early stages, God himself wants you to know of the ability that you now have that you are not even aware of. So certain things are supposed to happen as they are. You don't tell people ju during the funeral that I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm so much exci I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> But have it recorded in your journal that I've once prophesied in my lifetime. I've seen a thing that has now come to pass. So you are already being established as a seer, as a prophetess, as a prophet. This idea that you see people talking about, talking about what they don't understand, that if a prophet sees a thing, it has to be stopped. They are yet to become prophets. Why they want you to stop everything that you see is so that they say that you lied. <laughs> see it, tell them you stop it. See it, tell them you stop it. See it, tell them they will, they will bring you a list of prophecies that you gave from 2000. You prophesied this, it never happened. You prophesied this, it Yet you were making use of another wing. It's a prophetic wing that comes to dissolve prophecies that are negative. But that wing should not be immediately engaged until you are established as a prophet. And they will know if you say this is going to happen, now let's pray to stop it. They will know that we, they really have to pray, otherwise the thing is going to happen. So get established first. Let them know that you're a prophet and you have also to know that you are now a prophet. Yes. There is need for you to even know that. Yes. So you are left wondering now because you have been wondering. So what was the point of God even telling me? If I couldn't stop it. So that you know. That you now can see. Any question on that? Yes? I will begin to simplify it very, very soon. Because you said it right. It's complicated. And you know what? Prophets would like to keep it that way. Because they don't want you guys to join them. It makes them special. If they are the only ones seeing. He tells you, I'm seeing an angel standing over there. And you wonder, you try to open your eyes to see. You can, you, I will simplify that today for you. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, uh, Father. Uh, my question is, is a different one. You, I happen to see you in my dreams. I think uh, in a space of two years now, I've recorded uh, 17 visions where you are always coming in my room and instructing me a lot of things. Uh, maybe if you can allow me, I can, I can say the last two that I had two weeks back. Maybe two seconds, two seconds. Um, I had a vision where someone 
another man of God whom I cannot mention had come to you and I was with you in a room and he was kind of warning you that are you aware some people have already published uh, lies about your coming Easter conference and then we we rushed to church you you say let's rush to church and then you send me and we said can you get inside and check those flyers that this man of God is talking about I took the flyers the flyers were advertising the upcoming uh, UFIC Easter conference but behind the flyer and the card there were numbers so these numbers somehow I understood them that they are saying on this Easter conference the prophet won't be with us so I gave you the flyer, I gave you the card, then we went back home. That, uh, that man of God again came back in the house, like to check if you are worried about uh, that information. And then uh, uh, you said to me, but this man of God, he was worried that somehow you have realized it's him who printed those flyers. <laughs> that uh, you won't be around. Then you say to me, Sonny, don't worry. The Christ TV will advertise this Easter that I will be around. So we are covered. Then I, I woke up from that vision. Then the other one was, um, I happened to be with Mama Prophetess on a table and she was saying to me, Ha! Ah, you know this thing that we have done, Sonny? We, we have things we have listed with prophet that we will never do in our lives. We have a list of things. But bringing me here is one of the things we agreed we will never do. So tell me what, what really happened. It's like Mamu was in a shock that, ha! Ah, prophet agreed. <laughs> then, you mean, bring, you mean I, bringing you to the table? It's like Mama had come way, way, way. It's like we managed to bring Mama where I was. It was like a church So for us, event. Can, yes, something that we said we'd never do. Yes, that, yes, that, yes, that. And then I came up from the, the vision. But the other 16 visions, I have them in my head. Okay. All right. So what, 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 do, what, do you want, what do you want to understand about that, that, that realm? Is, is, there, is there a question there? I want to understand how do I, I I'm lost uh, that uh, I don't know whether what, what to do with the visions do they need me to act quickly should I come like a thief at your house and wow. break the wire or what I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> thought, I thought I thought you said I'm the one that came so it should be me coming and breaking your wire and so on. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so prophetically I was led to ask you so that it becomes clear whether it was you coming or me coming. And you said it was us coming to you. So you don't need to worry about that. Okay. Anyway, we'll get to that. I'll explain, I'll explain because there's a section that, that covers that. So soon we'll get into that. You see, it's important what he's saying. But already remember what I had said earlier on concerning communications, that we destroy other structures of communication that God has put in place simply because we want to be talking on the phone every time. Okay. So even before you asked that question, I was already trying to at least encourage you to consider really fortifying that platform of communication. It's important to always be talking to each other but at the same time being very very careful of dreams in case they lead you astray. Yes. With anything, whether it's a vision or what, any of those things, even angels can, can lead you astray. They still have to be discerned. Now when you are when you are when you are given the gift which is of discerning spirits. 
The gift of discerning of spirits means that you will have to discern not just the presence of evil spirits. With the gift of discerning of spirits, you also has to have to discern the spirit of God. With the gift of discernment, you are not only discerning whether this is a demon. With the gift of discernment, you also have to discern the Spirit of God by the Spirit of God. You know the things of the Spirit by the Spirit. You have to discern whether it is an angel that has brought information to you. You have to verify it. The DD has to be conducted. Due diligence. Some people in the Bible would say, wait here for a moment, I'm going to bring my seed. And they would go and prepare a meal and bring it to an angel. And what the angel did was a manifestation. That was the end of the DD. They knew that if this is truly an angel, I know what is going to happen if an offering is, is to be brought out. If this man is really from heaven, they don't attack offerings. They will, they will manifest in a certain way if an offering is presented. And the angel did something that he was never going to do. He had the seed not brought to him. And he disappeared, he penetrated, he entered and he was transported back into heaven by the sacrifice. At that point they realized that this was not a man. So even with the spirit of God, it still has to be subjected to the gift of discernment. And God is never going to be offended. It's not wrong for you doubting a true prophet until he is verified. It's not wrong. It's not wrong. So when it comes to dreams, because there is quite a lot of vanity in many of these dreams because of the dreamer. There is a lot of vanity in most of the dreams that you are going to have because of the dreamer. The dreamer of the dreams. The dreamer of the dreams. If there is no preciseness, if there is no rule of law in your lifestyle, if certain standards of living are not maintained during the day, there is a distortion in your experiences during the night. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Sometimes your dreams are as confused as your room. There is so much disorder in your house that there cannot be any order in your dream. So when you put things in order, you arrange things nicely in your bedroom. What you are literally arranging is the dream that you are going to have that night. Because as dreams are coming before they get to you, they walk through your room. Because they are not, they are coming from, you see? Okay. Because <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a chameleon. When a chameleon gets into any environment, for its own safety, it takes what? The environment. It disappears into that environment. So imagine a dream is coming from any direction and it gets into your house and it passes through the kitchen. It's coming, it's coming to your bedroom. By the time the dream I'm just, I'm just trying to simplify it. Don't, don't, don't say no, he was telling us that dreams come through the garage and so. But no, before the dream gets to the dreamer, it gets first to his environment. And it takes on your lifestyle before it gets to you. 
So it arrives so much distorted. There is so much chaos. Even a dream of peace will become a dream of war. And you can tell me a dream and I can explain to you the arrangement in your room. And I can tell you, no, 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 this dream never left God this way. You disfigured, your environment disfigured the dream. So next time, put your house in order for the sake of spiritual visitations that are going to come. So again, when you are preparing your house, you are preparing yourself, you take a good shower. It's not just so that the person next to you will uh, enjoy your presence. No. 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 <laughs> Have you realized that there's a scripture in the Bible, I don't know whether we should go there, which talks about the, a certain behavior that women should have towards their husbands for the sake of angels. It's the way they present themselves, the way they dress, and all sorts of things, and it all boils down to her experience, even with angels. How those visitation, angelic visitations are going to be affected. Huh. So you dress your room according to the dream. You give the dream an arrangement that you prefer. Before, because before the dream gets to you, the dream gets to your wardrobe. It comes through your veranda. It walks through the passages coming to you. By the time it arrives, it is now as chaotic as your room. And you're trying to figure out these things, you know what I dream sometimes, it's so, so confusing and so on. <laughs> you didn't bath yesterday. You should have bathed for the sake of the dream. Go to bed fresh. First Corinthians 11 verse 8. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Because of what? The angels. Power on her head. What's the head of the woman? The husband. But because of what? The, because of the angels. Don't want to get into that how her spiritual lifestyle in as far as angels are concerned will be decided on how she handles her head which is the man you can choose what the next angel is going to tell you based on the way that you treat your head So it means when an angel is coming, before the angel gets to you, he passes through your husband and finds out whether the head is happy about you. And the message will be altered before it gets to you. And you must have an understanding now that no, 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 no. what I heard from the angel was not the original message from heaven. It was because of the husband now. This is how I've treated my men. It, it plays all, it, it is the other side of the coin again, a scripture that says you have to love your wives and so on so that your, your husbands, your prayers are not what? Hindered again. The way that you treat your wife will determine how fast God is going to hear your prayers. Prayers can be hindered by the nun praying. You thought you were the only person involved in, the, in, the, in, your, in your prayer life. Forget it. Mm. It's important that you do right. You consider certain people in your prayer life before you go on to pray. Because wherever they are, they decide whether you are heard or you are ignored. Thank you, Thank you. Likewise, ye husbands, 
Dwell with them with knowledge. according to knowledge. Dwell with them, your wives, according to what? To Dwell knowledge, with. yes. Giving honor unto A level of honor that if it's not given to your wife, what happens? As unto the weak of yes. vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of yes. life, that your prayers be not healed. Thank you. So how many of you can then look back and see that this prayer was ignored because of the way that I've treated my wife? We don't want to look at that because we believe that prayer is so powerful. It will have to boot doors and destroy all that. Who do you think you are that you can stop me from praying? And the wife is left stranded. Because the man of God is good at spiritual intimacy. But no understanding of physical romance. If you don't understand romance, if you cannot really touch your wife nicely, it will even be difficult for you to nicely prophesy because there's a way that... Uh, okay. <laughs> It's almost the same thing because it's prophecy, it's a build-up. You want to arrive at a certain orgasm. Do we have the right, do we have the right people here? I don't think... There must be a way that you are able to read the feelings of the other. It's almost like the same principle while you are prophesying to a person, you almost can tell what I've said is true even before the person says yes. It's not just about feeling what you are feeling, you have to feel what they are feeling. Okay, he wants to say something. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity. First of all, uh I'm, I'm enjoying the prophetic that is already in the house because as you are speaking you are even answering the question that i was just writing down there. so i thank you so much for but perhaps allow me to to ask it in detail so that you can explain it more in detail for me because i've been struggling in that in that area um is there a difference father in the in the language um, of the prophet and the prophecy itself um, does one has to learn how to communicate the, the prophecy in a language unique to that prophecy to the to the audience uh, in other words how important uh, is it to connect the prophecy with the proper language that sits well with the, with, the, with, the, with the audience. It, it has been a struggle, Father, because sometimes I see my wife is a dream, sometimes I see. But to release what we have seen, sometimes we fail to communicate properly, and sometimes we are afraid because of the language that we have. It might not be the proper language, and sometimes we sit back and watch things happen, and we end up being like our sister minister here, the great team communicating things that you could have communicated because of failing to have the proper uh, introduction words and language that might suit the audience that was and she said wisdom with the wisdom that accompanies the yes, the, 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 the the spiritual thank you, thank you father you've been answering already yes i thought i could provoke a deeper understanding okay this is what happens when like i've told you i i i I'm attempted getting into that when i said when prophecies is being edited the first person to edit the prophecy is God. It's not happening, happening in the studio. Editing, the editing of prophecy happens 
when God speaks to you, the fact that is not everything he knows that he tells you. It means certain information has been edited. So you must really allow this term to sit well in you as a prophet. I said some people when they hear the editing of prophets, they think it's being doctored. Yes, it is being doctored. In a certain way. Who starts? God. By not telling you everything, it means he has omitted certain information. Leaving out that information is actually editing. God knows everything and only he tells you what you need to know. Now, so from that point, we move on to the language. And I told you that people believe that there is no error in the Bible. And yet the language used in the Bible is an error. It's not the God language. So, it's okay for you to convert God's language into their language so that they understand what God would have said to you in his own language. It is not the God language that you will convey to the people. They are never going to understand what God is saying to them if God is to stick to his language then only God can hear himself but the prophet is the person with an ability to interpret the language of God which is not English which is not Greek it is not Hebrew it is not Latin The God, God's language is God. The language of God is God. When he speaks, the language that he speaks is himself. The word is the name that he gave to himself. He is called the word. So that even when he is not speaking, he is saying, you can look at him and hear what he is saying. If you know him to be the word. So you must be able to look at him. While you are looking with your eyes, you must be able to hear him while he is not speaking. If he is the word. When it comes to the people that you want to help with information that you got from God, you have to convert that information, that dream, that revelation, that vision into a language that the people have understood. Now, but you are going to lose a lot of flavor in the process of that conversion. It's a struggle. That's why I said when I was starting that spiritual things are so difficult to teach. Yes, to convert it, it will arrive a completely different message. So what needs to be done now is your ability because sometimes you, you can, there is something about not just the message. When you get a message from God concerning a certain nation that he wants to punish, you must not just hear what God is saying about what he is about to do against that nation because of what they have done against him. It's not just that message that you need to be able to receive from God. Being able to receive even the anger of the Lord. It's not just what he said. It is how he said it. And you are hearing him, his language, and you read his mood. Because that also should accompany the language. After you have converted his language into their language, still the anger of the Lord needs to be felt in the delivery of that message so that they don't think that God is joking. Let me tell you something. I don't know whether this God will help you to understand it. I wish I had another way of simplifying it, but even after simplifying it, you still need God's help. It's like when 
when an angel comes and he appears he walks into your room and you can see that I have been visited this is an angel of God in most cases in the Bible many men of God would faint they would fall to the ground but do you know that you can have the Lord himself visiting you and he might not terrify you at the level that you are terrified by an angel that is lesser than him. I want to explain something to you. It's, it's key. So please stay focused. Look at me, please. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Do you know that you can have a conversation with the Lord? Where the Lord can come, even after his resurrection, he can come, he can talk to you. And sometimes you might want even to touch him and feel, is he the resurrected Savior? And yet just two angels at his grave, you could not stand, you, it's so terrifying. How is it that you can even fear? Remember these people, I gave you scripture last time, that Jesus was transfigured. And two personalities appeared. Who was, who and who? Moses, Moses and who? Moses and Elijah. Yes, and Elijah. And they were afraid. And Jesus, after that encounter, came and then he touched them. He said, do not be afraid. And they were no longer afraid with Jesus. But Elijah and Moses made them more afraid. Now, how come the greater one makes you even more comfortable? But the lesser one in power and in strength. These angels are even servants. You found something? Yes, found Mark 9, 4. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elijah. For he was not what mm. to say, for they were so afraid. Yes. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear, hear him. And suddenly, when they had looked around about, they saw no man anymore, save Jesus only with themselves. Only Jesus was left. Yes. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them to tell no man. Tell no man. But in another, in another gospel, he actually told them not to be afraid. Okay? But hear this. What is key now here is, I want to explain to you the fear. How is it that you can be able to see the Lord, his image, he sits on the throne and the train of his robe fills the temple. It's him that you're seeing. And yet other angels under him can even make you more terrified. If they come and they stand you with you, next to revelation, you faint. Yet yesterday you saw the Lord himself. So I need to explain that to you. Do you know that there are times when an angel, a lesser angel, that is always you know them to be lesser than their creator. It's a fact. That's the truth. He can walk in here and you might not be able to stand his presence. While it's, you are born again, you have Jesus in you. Standing, walking, eating, talking. But when a lesser being walks in, he gives you a, a more, much more terrifying experience as if he is greater than the Lord that you have already received. You want to know what is happening? 
what causes angels that are lesser in strength to even intimidate you more? Do you know that you will have angels that you will fear? Not because you fear them. You will ha have angels that you fear not because they are fearful. You will have angels that you will fear because that was their fear. When they were standing in the presence of God. Before they came. So now. The angel that comes to you is coming from the Lord. Mm. Whilst he was in the presence mm. of the Lord, being given a message for you, he was terrified. He was afraid. So when he comes to you, not only does he bring the message from the Lord, he transports, he transfers the fear. So... So when the angel comes now into your presence and you are shaking, it's another message delivered to you. The angel is telling you to feel how he felt when he was receiving the message on your behalf. Are you following this? That's the only reason because how can you, how can you fear a lesser being yet you have the greater one inside of you? So it's a transference, it's a sharing of an experience. So he doesn't come to you and he says, the Lord has said this. No. He will say what he heard from the Lord and he will also transfer an experience that he had. So that what he tells you is accompanied by a fearful feeling. Feel how I felt when I was hearing what I heard concerning you so when the angel is gone you must be left knowing that that was not my fear that's how the angel was afraid of the presence of God so I'm just touching on that because you're talking of the language and being able to transmit it sufficiently ah, I think some of you want to go for a break because I, I know I know I know I know <laughs> <laughs> Father, I, I found the translation, I found the other one, the transfiguration where Jesus yes. says to them, they must yeah. not be afraid. It's from the book of Matthew 17 from verse uh, yes. 6. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were so They afraid. were so afraid. Afraid. Yes. afraid. And Jesus came and touched yes. them and said, arise and be not Don't afraid. Don't be afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no because one. The, because now there was no one else who was, <laughs> those guys that were intimidating. So they became so reluctant. It was okay now. Yet they now had Jesus, the greater one present. But now they were less afraid. How do you explain that? So the angel will make you, whether you roll on the floor, you feel like you're fainting. It was him who almost fainted. So that this is to help you understand that sometimes <laughs> you will have Jesus in your room one day and you are talking to him standing and then you will have a lesser being come and he makes you fall. That's the same thing. That's the same thing. Do you know sometimes the devil might not even stand our presence. We can resist him to a point where he flees. The way that we cast out demons and so on. And yet the devil, in the presence of the Lord, he could stand. Talk to Jesus. In two places, in the wilderness, he's tempting Jesus. There's no fire like he's rolling on the ground like I feel. The fire. This man is on fire. No, no, the devil never felt that. Again, it came to pass on the day when the sons of God gathered together and Lucifer, the devil himself, also appeared. And he did, not, he did not fall. Yet he's in the presence of a greater being. There are demons that can actually stand in the presence of Jesus. Demons. But they might not be able to stand in your presence. Yet you are lesser, a lesser being. 
How do you explain all those things? It's how Jesus is able to contain his power. He doesn't have leakages. The weaknesses that we also have as human beings, the power in us also takes advantage of those weaknesses. It leaks through those weaknesses. Real power is power over power. Yeah. <laughs> with less power, you can give demons tough, a tough time with less power. God with more power. Demons can feel comfortable. They can communicate, talk to him. Oh, how come you have come today? You're not supposed to be here today. They negotiated with the Christ. The control, the management of that power is where the difference is. So talking about the language, be seated please. Talking about the language. God would bring a message to you concerning a situation that he wants to address. And then he talks to you in a God language which is not familiar. People cannot understand that language. That is why God can even talk to you while the people are present. And they will not get to hear until you decide to go there and tell them. Mm. Mm. People will have to be told what God said about them while they were present. Because of the language that God uses. Because it is given to you to understand the mysteries of the God. That's what Jesus said about his disciples. The rest parables and so on, but it is given to you to understand. So what is given to you is an understanding mm. of mysteries. So his language, if it comes to you in a mysterious form, what is given to you is to understand. To understand. It's given. Somebody has to be made aware of that fact that it is not it shall be given. It is given to you to understand the mysteries. So if a message comes to you in any form as long as it is in a mysterious form, it is given to you to, to, to interpret it, to understand it. So you know sometimes by God's emotion that this is the judgment of God over this territory. And you will know that this is a message from the Lord, not because God has told you that he is angry. No. You might look at God and not see his anger on his face. But sometimes you have to look at the weather. And the weather can become angry on behalf of God. And there is no rain for seven years. So you will know that nature is acting out the mood of the Lord over this particular territory. So just reading the weather pattern, you can tell the people of that area that God is not happy. So the anger of the Lord is not on God's face. It is transferred to nature. So there are times when you have to look away from God in order for you to see him. What else is communicating God's mood, which is not God? Because so many things around God will act on behalf of God because everything that he created is a servant to him. Everything that he created 
is a servant to him. So they are ready to act out his mood. So as a prophet, you will know the reason why there is a tsunami. You will have to know. Who is given that ability to dramatize the anger of the Lord to the sea? Where is the sea getting its script from? Who is giving direction to the tornado? Is it a natural thing or it is the Lord's mood being played out by creation? All those, those are languages for your own information. He didn't say anything. I'm showing you now. He didn't say anything. But these are, all these are communications that you must be able to read as a prophet and know why things are happening the way they are happening. The rest of the people, they will say, no, it's mother nature. But a prophet should go into his closet, into his room, and you take out your instruments and you measure the temperatures outside. You must have instruments in your room. That sometimes you use those ones. You get to God and you say, excuse me, say, and then you open his armpit and you take the temperature. <laughs> if you have stayed with him long enough, have you ever had a person that you love that you have stayed with and you know today is not feeling well and you say, what's wrong with you? He says, I'm okay. Am I right on that one? You know, she just doesn't want to tell you. But she would have communicated. What's that language? The mood. So you can never say that my husband doesn't like talking to me. If he's not talking to you, he's talking to you. You are just not ready to come to his level of communication to search out the reason why. Maybe it is what you did last time with the information that he communicated. Now he's realized that it's, there is no need for me to keep telling you things. It's just that you are not aware. How have you dealt with previous information? The problem with my husband, he doesn't tell me things. If we travel back into history, we'll get to a place where he was talkative. He would tell you almost everything. And whilst he's busy explaining certain things to you, you bring in a completely different story. until he realized that it is a waste of time. When I'm talking to this person, she's hearing something else. <laughs> Let's say you make a confession. You make a confession to your wife or you make a confession to your husband. And ever since, she keeps bringing back that issue as if she investigatively found out and it was you that volunteered that information. What does that tell you today about any new confession that you have? Talk to me, somebody. Talk to me, somebody. <laughs> don't confess. You don't what? You don't confess. Yes. And not confessing, it is, there is a reason attached to that. Because you are looking at information that she already has, that you gave to her, how she is abusing that, misusing that. So you say, until you must show me a level of, you, you must, a, a level of maturity, 
I've given you so little so that I see how you grow, how you manage that, and, and then we'll get to another greater confession. <laughs> so you cannot just say, but my wife is not interested in talking to me. It doesn't, if you're counseling people, don't arrive at a judgment based on, the, on that kind of a statement. You're not being told the truth. Hello? Yes. Yes. Investigate. Where is it coming from? So you come to me, you tell me that, you know, I have a problem. My wife doesn't, doesn't enjoy kissing me. I will say, what, what can we do? Because the wife is not here. At least... At least, at least you have brought your mouth here. <laughs> so I have to work with the mouth. Open it a little bit. And I, I work with what is available. She doesn't like this. She doesn't enjoy kissing you. Let's, let's look into your mouth. Let's forget about the wife. Maybe she's busy somewhere else, but the mouth is here. Let's see. There's always a reason. But people will never disclose that part to you. Can you read the mood of God? God would have warned you several times. But he's using a language that you're not familiar with. That's why you say, ah, God did not tell me this. Hmm? How come God just came and this happens to me and then I'm I'm surprised there wasn't a way. God should have told me. Yet he told you. Maybe he never told your ears, but he told you what? Your reins. But the communication now is left up to you and your reins to communicate. It's amongst yourselves, you and your bones and your, your, your hair and so on. The question was, he wanted to say something. Before we get to you, I'm in trouble. <laughs> uh, thank you, Papa, for this opportunity. In Edom Fonzo, I'm going to say, understanding. My question is, yeah. I want yeah. understanding. You're going to say, Panama dreams and you know it. That there are certain dreams that I encounter. Some of them happen inst instantaneously. Because my dreams they take time, or maybe two. And then there are dreams that take time to happen, and some of them have not come to fruition yet. So because I among my dreams. Without doing anything. So my question is, is there something that I must do? Master Some of them we are talking about it. It depends whether it's a dream that you had that is yet to be fulfilled or it's your wrong interpretation of that dream that is yet to happen. Okay. It's either it's a dream that is yet to be fulfilled. Or it's a wrong interpretation of a dream because you might have a dream coming to pass and you still wait for the wrong interpretation of that dream to come to pass. Two different things. Two different things. In the case where you interpret a dream wrongly, you wait for a wrong fulfillment. That when the dream is to happen now, you won't notice that the dream has been fulfilled. Why? Because you have attached a wrong interpretation to the dream. Because dreams, the actual dreams are not dreams. The actual dreams are their interpretations. Explain that. Let's <laughs> explain that. <laughs> you know the scripture already. Me, me he what? Restored. Him, he hanged. 
what these two guys had were two different dreams. What they got from Joseph was the interpretation of their dreams. And based on the interpretation, the dreamer was sure that it is by the interpretation that a man is restored. It is by the interpretation that a man is hanged. So the dream is not what it is. The dream is its inter interpretation. So imagine now if you are going to interpret a dream in a wrong way. You are going to be waiting for a fulfillment of a dream that has already been fulfilled. So what you are waiting for is a wrong interpretation. And that might never happen. So you must first of all, before you start investigating the fulfillment of dreams, investigate your ability to properly interpret the dreams. Are you attaching the right interpretation to the dream? That also covers even the ones that you think were fulfilled. Again, maybe it was a wrong interpretation <laughs> that God fulfilled. The dream is yet to be fulfilled. Try and understand style. There is something about yourself that you need to study first. If you are going to be effective in the, in the prophetic. Prophetic it doesn't just mean that you are always hearing God's voice every time. There are times when you are, it could be a dream. There are people like that, they can survive on dreams for the rest of their entire prophetic career. And such a person might not give you any information unless he asks you to spend a night. Because he knows there's a place that he usually visits, which is called night, where he gets instructed and he gets his counsel from. So style, you must, you must understand the style which your spirit, you the spirit, is comfortable with. Because you can't just be worried about dreams not coming to pass if you don't have an understanding of how far you are placed into the future as a prophet. Your position in the future will become an indication of how long it is likely to take for your prophecy to come to pass. How do I know I'm in the future? How do I know I'm in the present. How do I know I'm in the past? You might not be told verbally that, hey, where, where you have come, this is the future. Where you have come, this is... No. Something might be placed there inside of that experience to indicate where you are positioned. Something. You might not be told that you are in the United Kingdom. But in that vision, you will just be allowed to, to come across pounds. That's what they use, right, in the UK? And you see people exchanging pounds, pounds, pounds. You don't see any other currents. And that becomes the message of your location. Just that. God will be convinced that just by that you'll know where you were. When, when is this? Is this the future? In that revelation as a prophet, they will just allow a cars to pass in front of you. And all that you see are cars. And God is hoping that you look at the number plates because they register according to years. And if you were smart enough, they believe that you are supposed to know that these numbers are yet to come. 
It means the thing that you see happened, you, you, he might have, have actually given you the period of time. So there's a level of intelligence that is required in this ministry. How do you know that you are in the future? How do you know that you are in the present? How do you know that you are in the past? You might not be told that welcome to the future. No, you might not be told that you are in the present. You might not. You might not be told that you have traveled back into the past. But there is something that will be allowed by God to happen to you either before the experience or after or during which represents the calendar of the event. I'm beginning to try and simplify. I hope I'm not complicating it. I should be able to tell you what I've seen and if you ask me is it in the future or in the past? I should be able to go back into my spiritual experience and be able to tell whether it is ahead, before, or present. Not because I'm told. No. Not because I'm told. There is always something That if you are brought into a person's house in a vision and you are walking there, maybe before you get to see the person, this, what, what else are you seeing apart from the person? You can see a pot of boiling water splashing all over the place and children are bent. And you look at a person and you say, ah, you might say that you need to be careful. This is what is going to happen. And then sometimes she tells you this is what has already happened. So you were warning a person against a coming calamity and yet the calamity has already occurred. So you have misrepresented. It is the way I'm still maybe trying to touch on what you and, and exactly what you, what you are raising as a question. But if you had stayed long enough in the kitchen, there were indicators there apart from just the water that was boiling. Maybe there was a calendar hanging there, which was placed there in that vision deliberately to give you an indication of when exactly this thing happened. But because you focused just on one thing, it is important every piece of item placed in that revelation to be read, to be noticed. Because maybe one of those things in that place is there to give you a clue. What else did you see in that dream? You, you are so sure. This one, I can, I can <laughs> with all confidence, all of the dreams that you can tell me, no matter how accurate, no matter how detailed, there is something else about that dream that you did not see. Am I right on that one? There is always something about that dream that you did not see. So your ability to harvest all of it and you work with every piece of that dream, then your understanding of that dream is going to be complete. What else did you see? Apart from what I see sometimes, if you ask me, are you in the future? Are you in the present? So there is a way sometimes, if it comes to me, I can tell you that apart from what I see sometimes, I have a way of knowing. I know where my future is. When I'm standing like this, it's not, it doesn't always mean that your future is ahead. It's a wrong understanding probably maybe that you might have. So you have to be calibrated knowing how your system works.
so that sometimes maybe before I begin to prophesy I might feel a movement have you ever been into an elevator can you tell when it's going down yes can you tell when it's going up even when your eyes are closed it's just a feeling right So there can be a movement even before I begin to prophesy to a person. I can feel a push forward. But it doesn't mean that the forward is always forward. It depends on what has been established in my direction as the future and as the past. So sometimes you are, you are dragged towards a particular direction and then you begin to see. Then you know that this is what has already happened. I see that there was a pot and there was water boiling. And before you even finish, the person is already jumping. But I was not told that it happened in the past. The movement. It did not come to me as a message. Sometimes it's a feeling. It's a feeling. Having done it over and over again, you would know for sure that now this is the future. It happens maybe before you prophesy or even after. After is when you are coming back. You feel it. The way that you are traveling. Man of God, can I confirm something? This gentleman is saying his father was almost poured boiling water on him by his mother when he was young, a long time ago. Just like you were talking about the boiling water. No, I'm not prophesying, I'm giving an example. This is purely, no, 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 this is purely an example. If I'm prophesying, I tell you I'm prophesying. But hear this, let me try to simplify something here. You know, when, when, when you look at prophecy, I don't want you to Convince yourself that it is impossible for you to prophesy. Don't, don't convince yourself that it is impossible. Because once you have convinced yourself that mm -mm, that's not my area, it's not always because it's difficult for people to prophesy, but the, the people prophesying have presented the prophetic in a very, very difficult manner in order to safeguard their territory because that's all they know to do. Yes. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. You need a prophet who is not just a prophet but who is generous. And then he can explain to you how these things are attained. It's not difficult. In fact, every child of God is prophetic. You might not be in the office, but as of being prophetic, every child of God, you cannot have the Holy Ghost and not know the, the future. The Bible says he will tell you of things to come. The Holy Ghost will tell you, whoever has the Holy Ghost will be told of things to come. Now, what is going to stop most of you from delving into this magnificent gift? is the way that the prophets have prophesied before. Be careful of the prophets that you admire. They will prophesy in a way that you will keep admiring them for the rest of your life and never prophesy like they do. What do I mean? It could be very, very simple prophecy that they receive. But they add a lot of sugar. <laughs> uh, oh, the few of you that are standing, you can sit. You sit there. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't hear what I said. You, you didn't hear what I said.
you will be left wondering. So this man in a vision saw a visitor who came to this man's house and he was there. And then the owner of the house had so many sheep. So this man went to, he saw sheep and then this man, he, and then, and then he, he went and he took another man's sheep and he slaughtered it and he gave it to his friend. And, uh, this is the prophet prophesying to who? To David. And everything that he's saying is not even a part of what he saw. Mm. <laughs> and you are going to wait and wait and wait before you start prophesying because you are waiting for sh a ship to appear, right? A degree where you will be surprised that even if what you know, the little that you know is to be given to a man who is capable of really co constructing it well. You will not even believe that you even see better than he sees. You are not going to prophesy. Why? Because information that you think is information, knowledge that you think is knowledge, prophecy that you think is prophecy, most of it, it is not. It is what accompanies prophecy. Do you know you have neglected detailed prophecy which is so deep Like picking on somebody and then you say, I, I, this is how you have to do it when you are studying. It's not always right for you to invite people and you say, the Lord is telling me this. Because of the dangers, there are so many things involved when it comes to the delivery of prophecies. Be, you don't, you, don't be too sure because that assurance is going to be transferred to the person that you are prophesying and is going to do exactly as you said, being sure that you had and yet you know that you were not sure. It's very, very important for you to even indicate that I don't know my sister. Can I talk to you? You know, when I looked at you, it was just like a feeling. I just felt. Be honest enough if you want to grow in the prophetic. I felt as though you have been going through a situation. Wallister was, Wallister was looking at you. Whether this is going to be a problem of hearing, like one of your ear will give you some challenges, or maybe you, you've heard that in the past. I'm not sure, but I just felt like I just need to pray for you. You, you see the way that I've presented that? I did not intimidate you whatsoever. You have a right to say no. And also you have not put yourself on a tight corner where she will say that you have lied. Give the person space to d even disagree and you, you, and you are not offended. And you know sometimes you are not, you see, that way, you have, if she tells you that I've even be, been to the doctor, they have checked my ear. It has been giving me, it has been ringing several times. It says, that prophecy is too detailed. But that's, that is no longer the prophecy that you want to receive from the Lord. That's why I'm saying I have to bring you back to proper prophecy. Not what you think is prophecy. Such a person would have prophesied in a deeper way. How do you look at the ears are the same size? How do you? And yet it seems as if he is not that deep. This one is shallow. He only touched on the ear. Do you know there is not a prophet who can prophesy deeper than a fake one?
You can never compete with a fake prophet in terms of depth. Forget it. <laughs> My God. I have to say this because those are the guys that have discouraged from prophesy. To say, if prophecy is now at that level, I can't be talking of eardrum. Ear, ear <laughs> I need details. Where is this person coming from? What's the phone number? What's the address? And it probably at your level of identifying an ear problem, you would have corrected the situation. You have helped a person. Yes, Baba. Yes, Baba. More than somebody who has said a lot of things which has nothing to do with solving people's problems. Yes. And you are hearing from somebody who can tell you all of that information. If I want, I can. So it's not an attack on people who are doing it. No. But I can honestly tell you after I'm done prophesying to you that all those things that you were happy because I mentioned this, that those were the lesser parts of the prophecy. The deepest was the ear. So imagine now if God is to start with you at that level. That's the level that you're not ready for. Am I helping somebody? Yes. Yes. So we have completely destroyed the prophetic by the way, the style. And we can come here and introduce not necessarily the prophetic but a certain style. Not necessarily because prophecies have been prophecies have been happening ever since. Ever since from the Old Testament, prophets were giving prophet prophecies. So if I come here, what I can introduce is something completely new. It's not prophecy, it's a style. And we can present it in a way that will make it difficult for the upcoming prophets to even attempt to prophesy. Because they feel like they are, they are joking. How does that, this guy see numbers? This is, this, is, this is too long. Passport number, all of it. This is too long. And you want me to prophesy about the headache? Yet you'll be surprised when you stand before God, you get a bigger crown. And you'll be looking at a prophet that you thought was much more detailed than you. He get a little crown that he cannot even put on his head. Maybe it's a, it's a ring or something like that. And you're wondering, and then you're told finally that it was his style. Not necessarily prophecy. When you want to extract water, if it's salt that you want that is in the water, see water. And you want salt that is in the water, you have to boil the water. When it keeps boiling, boiling, boiling until it is finished, what remains is what? Salt. In terms of quantity, it will be just a handful. Yet the whole container was full. When all of that prophecy is boiled down, Hey. 
what is going to be left is little prophecy that you are actually receiving, some of you here, on a daily basis. But you are not ready to give that one to the people because you think you are shallow. What you don't have is drama. You have never been to Hollywood. Like I, like I said, I have to simplify it so that you can give me, if, I, if, if we were just a small group, I would allow people, pastors, they've, I've given them this opportunity. I said you can find any prophet that you want. Let's, pray the, let's play the video. Any prophet that you think is so, 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 so deep. Let's, with pastors, when I'm teaching them, not, here we are too many. You can't do that. You don't want to sound like you're attacking somebody. But we, you can analyze it and then I can tell you this is the part that excites you but he's not yet prophesying here. This is not prophecy. This is not prophecy. This is not. When it gets to prophecy, we extract that and then we compare that to what you have and you realize that you're even better. Gentlemen, if you're dealing with a guy who can give you money to say yes to everything that you prophesy, can you be deeper than that guy? If a guy can give people money, you are given money and you sign an agreement that you will never come out to say that I lied. And you are not even told what I'm going to prove. It will be up to me. All you need to do is just to stand. And then I say whatever comes into my mind. And you agree to everything. Can you be deeper than such a guy? And that's what you see on YouTube. And then you go to the mountain. And you pray. You starve yourself to death. Let's come back after lunch. Thank you so much.